In this video, sponsored by Lancaster Insurance, can we put the engine in yet? Right, let's have a quick recap about what we need to do. Um, we've fitted a new water pump, so that one can be carefully tidied away. Um, that's crap. Uh, we've got new <coughs> thermostat housing and the new thermostat should be somewhere. Where have I put that? There it is. So there's a new thermostat, so that can go in. And um, we've got a gasket, so that'll make me happy. Plonkety plonk. Um, we've got the distributor up there. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of loath to touch it, knowing it runs well. But all this needs replacing anyway. So we'll, we'll, we'll get that done. New plugs, new leads, new coil. We've got a new water pump to fit. We've got engine mountings to fit. And then I think we'll actually be there. Oh, clutch. Clutch needs fitting. And I've been told not to fit the Borgen Beck, but it's what I have. So if it turns out to be rubbish, we should prove it. And uh, we should just take the necessary moment. Is it showing the rainbow that was just here has vanished? That's quite nice. We should just take a moment to appreciate the steam train. Not many people in the open carriage today. So, yeah, there we go. Lots of happy people. As we were. Um, so yeah, so clutch needs to go on. Um, I hope there's a centering tool in there, because I can't, typically I can't seem to find mine. I've got one somewhere. And then we'll get the um, engine in, I think. Actually, no. I must take um, a moment to discuss core plugs because the amount of people who left comments, some of them quite rude, saying this was the wrong way round. It isn't. There are different types of core plugs and um, it does very much depend on the engine. This is more in the style of a Welch plug, um, which is a term I think the Australians use. Um, but I, there's actually an American car company, I think, that um, was called Welch and started using plugs like these. Uh, I know the type people are referring to, the more common, sometimes they're held in with a ring, but they go in with a curve on the inside. These definitely go on the outside, that has been double checked. Uh, there is one improvement I can make though, and I will need more hammers. I think what would have worked better last time would be to simply hold the ball peen hammer against the middle and then just go like that and um, you can see or well, maybe you can't but we've got some distortion in the middle now which is what we want because the flatter this tries to be the better and the more secure it is in there um, so I, I think that's reasonably yeah I don't think that's going anywhere I think we'll be all right right well we got the hammers let's attack other things Sorry, I know hammers scare you, and I know this one is in very poor condition. Um, I will add to my range of hammers. Um, that is something I definitely want to do. Um, I'm aware that soft hammers are very good to have. Um, uh, copper or even plastic, rubber. There's many, many different types that would probably make you lot a lot less nervous. But um, I think the sacrificial screwdriver is going to be in order. Right, I think we've managed to get that turning. No, not quite with that yet, but with a few love taps with the old hammer. See, this is going to be a bit of a pain. Hammers are victorious once more. There we go. That is our remnant of engine mounting. The rubber section has just ripped off. Uh, so that's good. That's another stage complete. Oh. 
Brilliant. So um, this is what the, the mount should look like. So there's the rubber section that's just ripped off. And uh, the mounts also have these little hats, uh, which I think is quite sweet. Um, so just to protect them from the rocking of the engine. So the mounts are bolted into the chassis first and then we drop the engine in and the holes go through uh, onto the mounts. But we've got new mounts so we'll keep that as a spare but I will need the hats. There we go, there's a brand new mount. Um, it was on the roof of the Fox right in front of me. Um, so I just had a test fit just to make sure that will actually go into the engine because that would be annoying if it doesn't. More issues here actually. Bring you around. The other one was finger tight, this one not so much. So um, yeah, bit of the old penetrating doo doo on there, or as they call it in Scotland, remonstrating fluid. I like that. I've got bits of crap in my hair. Yes. There we go. No, I haven't. Just realised we've got another problem here. We can't have a captive nut on both sides of the mount, can we? Because otherwise, how do we tighten the mount up? Um, it's captive into the chassis, which I think is a different on the Fox compared to the Robins. Um, I think they have a nut and bolt through the chassis, which is fine because you just screw the mount onto there and then bolt it through the chassis. So I think I'm going to have to cut these nuts off. Um, so I don't think I'm going to spend any more time fighting that one that really doesn't want to come off. I'm just going to get the angle grinder out. Might move the petrol away first. Alright, look out, this is going to be noisy. Let's start with the easy one. I thought I was recording that second attempt actually wearing safety gear, but um, I wasn't. But that one's now chopped off as well. We've got some um, fine work um, making it look quite stylish, I think. Stripey. Um, still got a slight issue, but th this mount is still on here. And this is going to be a bit problematic to get off even now. Yeah, we're in luck. Uh, it is coming undone now. There we go. Uh, oh no, we need that. We need we need the hat, the hat back. So thankfully the hat escaped all that unscathed. So we shall go and um, add that to the new mount and put that on the chassis as well. Uh, we're definitely starting to get there. Where did I put the second mount now? So yeah, I, I wasted my time entirely checking that it'd screw into the engine because we're not going to do that. We're just going to bung a nut on the top. Of course, it probably won't have the right size nut, but um, there you go. All right, that one screws in, hopefully, down there, there we go. Parfait, and we put the little hat on. That one's now ready for an engine as well. Hoorah! All right, got the thermostat housing refitted again. Never tighten these bolts really hard. Just nip them up because otherwise you end up cracking the um, housing. You might also spot um, I fitted some uh, manifold, some brass manifold nuts. That's because I actually had them in stock. These, these ones are a pain and you have to jiggle it off the manifold, I can't be bothered. Um, but I have replaced the missing stud. So the stud is now in, the nut is now in. It is a whole lot more wholesome. Um, so all that remains to do now is um, do the ignition swapper and fit the clutch. Right, who remembers the horror of the distributor saga on Tuck the Invercar? Oh, it turns, it comes out. So there you go, that's the gear on the end that drives the distributor. So we'll try and get it lined up like that. Oh yeah, you can see it quite clearly in there. So that should make life easier. I think the next thing I'm going to do is do the spark plugs while the access is now excellent. Oh, here we go then. New distributor. Wow. Oh, that might be 
too tight a fit. Right, so I've just taken a file um, very gently to this outer collar and um, we'll see if that has made any difference. Um, see where the bracket is, get the pinion lined up. There we go. Right, it is time to see if it will run on the new ignition system with the new um, fuel pump. That's what we want. Right, this is all slightly worrying because I've completely changed everything so um, we're hoping this is going to be all right um, now fill the float bowl up with fuel uh, reconnect up the earth cable uh, give it some choke Now, no idea what's gone wrong with that. I had a working engine, I fitted a better ignition system. Now it doesn't work. I think I've had enough of this for today. Right, we're back for another go, and um, I've already found two of the spark plug leads were the wrong way round. So I was seeing spark, but it wasn't happening at the right time. So we'll um, have another go, shall we? Yeah, no, definitely counts as flooded. Now, if we can get that to focus. No, not really. There we go. They're quite soggy. Now, bang, bang the old plugs in, and we'll have a look at those instead. Which annoyingly use a different size of socket. it was running so um, yeah we finally got there um, I think it was a combination of things um, I'm not really sure what my conclusion is to be honest but it's definitely running it's on a mixture of plugs um, yeah I don't know how I'm meant to draw any conclusions really I'm not really sure what difference was made it is um, clutch time so I'm just gonna take the clutch plate itself and yeah, there we go. Just make sure that slides onto the splines. That's good because I don't want to be trying to jiggle an engine on and wondering why it doesn't fit and we discover that that doesn't fit at all. Uh, so that's flywheel side there. So that goes that way inside the clutch plate. Uh, so we'll get that bolted on next. I think that's the next step. I don't do this very often, to be honest. Uh, the thrust bearing actually goes straight on the um, shaft. Uh, you can see the old thrust bearing is still there. So I've got to get in the engine bay and replace that at some point, which should be tremendous fun. Right. That should be a dowel there and there. Okay, yep. There's one locating down, and another at the bottom somewhere. <coughs> there we go. And we shall start all these off, and then we shall get everything lined up. Hmm, okay, slightly concerning that it doesn't want to actually go flat on the... Um... How did I manage to get that wrong? It says flywheel side on it, 
so I put the flywheel side on the wrong side. That's marvellous. Still, at least I spotted it now. There we go. Before we wang all those up, oh, I seem to be missing one. Um, yeah, I need to align the clutch, but um, yeah, I seem to have lost a bolt already. That's go up. Should be one there and all. Joy. Oh yeah, I've made my own clutch alignment tool out of a socket, or a ratchet rather, and um, some tape. And um, I'm going to say that's good enough. I'll leave that in there just while I do the tightening. It's alright, I have other rackets. I might even have the right socket somewhere. Right, I need to remove the thrust bearing, which you can see just there. Uh, I have the new one. It is held in place with those clips. I'm not entirely sure how yet, but um, I'm going to have to get into the engine bay to um, try and get anywhere near it. I can see this being fun. <coughs> hmm. Not going to be the most working area here, I don't think. Hmm. If I can get myself in, and then I can't see what I'm doing. Um, hmm. I might not record this bit because I haven't got anywhere to put the camera. Well, I somehow managed to get the old one out. I'm still not entirely sure what I did, but uh, managed to ping the clips off. But here's a comparison for you. That's the old um, thrust pad. It's not so much called a bearing as a pad. And you can see it's worn away almost to nothing. And this is the one we're going to put in, which has all that material on it. So, um, yeah, definitely a job that needs doing. And these little clips, which are going to be an utter pain, I can tell, um, slot in there, and then the outside of the clip goes on the housing, um, which these round sections go into. And uh, I, I think this will be a job I will be doing off camera, for there will be much swearing. I mean, the biggest challenge is I've got to get into the engine bay. So, um, wish me luck. Because by the time I'm in here, there's not a lot of space to actually do anything. I'm trying to squeeze me thumb in. Oh. Yeah. The best bit is I can't now see what I'm doing. I've got to try and feel my way in. Oh, you know what? I think this is going to be a job. Where are I? Oh. Go and have a cup of tea first. Oh, well, I've managed to jack it up on stands and um, have it get a bit better access. I might undo that string just so the gearbox comes down a bit lower because um, access still isn't brilliant to be honest what a pig of a job so there's the spring but that um, springy bit needs to be the other side of um, the metal collar that's just visible at the bottom just beneath it so I need to spin the clip round Effectively, see how I get on. Oh, after all that, that was quite easily done, and that is now able to rotate in position. Like, just put a touch more grease on the swivel, so there, sh there shouldn't be that much swivel going on. So maybe I'll just leave well alone. There we go. Right, drag myself from under here. So a fair bit of surface rust in places square section tie rod there but um yeah hopefully everything will be all right let's get some tires ordered up because i reckon these ones are ancient Ugh. oh 
Who doesn't love crawling underneath cars? Well, I'm going to do one bit more bit of work. I know I've got to get this black panel off um, to allow access. Um, <clears throat> I've had to drill one screw out. This screw was very rotten. And then there's um, a couple of um, threads with nuts that go through here, which you can access through the radiator shroud. Uh, let's see if I can see one of them for you. Yeah, that's not focusing at all, but there is one just down there. That's one of them out. So um, I've already got one of them off. Screws out on this side. So let's see if I can get the other one out. Here we go then. The unmasking of the fox. I think. Oh yeah, there we go. That's the reason not. There we go. That should be it. There we go. Wow. That's a lot of rusty oil firings in there. I'm going to need me some new mesh. I'm going to tip these bits away. There we go. We've revealed more of the um, original blue. So, can I now get into the area? No, I still can't get into that cavity where my hinge fell down. It's uh, one of the washers. So um, I've not achieved anything there very much really. Um, but I could take the headlamp out if I was feeling brave. Well, I swallowed a bit of brave pill and took out the headlamp. Um, can't see any quick way of disconnecting the wire so that's just hanging there. Aha, but there's my bonnet hinge. Now see, it took a good chunk of metal with it, or a good chunk of fiberglass with it rather. It's just ripped it from the bottom of that piece, so I need to find a better way of securing that. Oh, that looks horribly like that, and that's never going to come undone. But um, we shall see. Uh, might need to get some new hinges. Maybe I need to find a better solution. But... Um, yeah, I mean, I could put a section of bar across and on the underside to try and act as a better spreader plate, because clearly a big washer is not enough. You think the forces that can be imparted on that panel, and fiberglass isn't really known for its strength in that regard. So there's another job to do. And I think that's where we're going to leave it for this one. Um, when we're both feeling better, Hopefully we can get that engine into that engine bay. Um, but at least we're starting to turn our attention to some of the other jobs that are going to be needed before this car can be roadworthy. Uh, still quite a long way to go. But we are getting there. And uh, the fox is all exposed with it, without its moustache. So, yeah. A bit frustrating, but we're still not there. But we are getting closer. The engine now runs on its electronic ignition, it has a new water pump, it has a new fuel pump, uh, it has a new clutch. Now we've got a thrust bearing on the gearbox, so we're ambling towards a functioning vehicle. So I shall start dismantling this and um, we can replace the mesh and um, we can start some cosmetic improvements as well. So thank you very much for watching, don't forget to subscribe before you go. And I shall see you in a future video, hopefully with a running fox. Farewell.